Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 59. 59. 59. How long we've been doing this? Clearly nine times. Yeah, at least 59 <laughs> and every other week. So that's you know about two years worth there. So yep. uh, lots of stuff that uh you can consume to help you with your home voiceover studio. But uh, tonight we got lots of cool stuff. We have a special guest for a short bit to announce something that I think you'll all find fascinating. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll take your tech questions. We got a few things that uh, we want to talk about and we will help you out with your home voiceover studio right now. So stay tuned. We're ready From to go. The outer reaches. They came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there, wherever you may be or whenever you're watching this or listening to this. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver body shop or vo b s there's a slight echo in there and i could hear myself and got to sync it up with that so much for plugging this in to stop the echo from happening well yeah, that's not work. helping all right well anyway we're learn, here to talk about something every day that's true stream yard with a mobile phone we'll just turn <laughs> that off yes, yeah just click that off for the time put that over there yeah Anyway, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studio and uh, all the technology involved in that, which George and I like to keep simple. Yeah. Because. Really. <laughs> well, mean, not on this show, but I mean, in general, for your studios, we want to keep it simple. <laughs> that's true. Very, very true. Uh, you know, there's there's lots of ways you can. As I like to say, as my brother used to say, the more stuff you have, the more that can go wrong. That is for so, sure. <laughs> uh, so, you know, having, having lots of gear is, uh, is not necessarily the way to go, uh, because having, yeah, having the gear is not the same as knowing how to use it or when to use it or what it does and why you would use it. So. Or you didn't even say the most important thing, what to do when it stops working. Oh yeah. How call, do you troubleshoot it? How do you, what do you do? <laughs> you don't call Ghostbusters. You call George Whittem or you call me Dan Leonard. <laughs> And because that's what we do, guys. I mean, our job is to teach you how to do it right. Our job is to fix it when it breaks, you know, and George knows that things break, you know, most of the time it's because it's a PC or it's something that is you know, new update. and it has not been updated or something along those lines. So if you need help, if you need more information, if you need help with technique, if you need help with how you send your audio out and you don't really understand it, it's time to talk to somebody who knows exactly what that is. And that would be one of us two, because we know this kind of stuff. This is what we do. If you want to talk to George, who's over there somewhere. <laughs> and, yeah, anyway, 
<laughs> yes, you can find me at georgethe.tech. Yes, that is the domain. It is 2021, and you don't have to end it in .com. As you know, our show is vobs.tv, and I am georgethe.tech. If you want to get anything that I'm doing, that's the place to do it. There's uh, webinars I'm teaching. There's a recording of my latest Adobe Audition webinar right there on the homepage if you want to see what, how to get access to that. And there's all sorts of just on-demand tech support and offline tech support stuff. So just let me know. Yeah, get, yeah, I'm getting a call right now, right here on my bat watch. Um, so yeah, you can you can reach me in very various different ways, and uh, there's so many ways we can work together. Dan also does the same kind of stuff over at HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. There it is, down there. If I just look at it, maybe it'll it'll you know it'll make it look like I know what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah, if you go over to HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Uh, I show all the services that I offer and uh, teach, which I love to do. I love working with people one-on-one. -on -one. one of the services I offer is uh, my uh, audio analysis. If you scroll down to the bottom of my homepage at homevoiceoverstudio.com, you'll find my specimen collection cup, and you click on that. It is a Dropbox where you can send me an MP3 of your raw audio, not the stuff that you've manipulated, even though you have no idea how to manipulate it. And uh, I want to hear what the raw sound of your audio is in the studio you have. And I will give you a thorough analysis of what it sounds like. Is it professional sounding? Is it not? Be amazed what George and I get from people who sing, what does my studio sound like? You know, and then you realize that they're talking into the wrong side of the mic or they're talking into their laptop mic or they're in a highly reflective place. And what we do is we tell you, here's how you fix that and get yourself sounded. We don't want your audio to be the reason you don't get voice work. So with that said, it is time to get more into the meat of the matter. Uh, George, what do you got in your tech update this week? Time for a tech talk. Yeah. Does that sound dated to you? I don't know. It sounds, Very. It sounds a little dated. <laughs> anyway, speaking of dated, let's talk about Windows. Um, ooh, how about that transition? Um, Windows 11 is coming? Yes, it Why? is. Uh, there actually is a Windows 11 on the horizon. Um, and I could not help but notice how incredibly similar looking it is to another OS that Dan and I happen to know and love quite well. Um, here's, a, here's a little look at Windows 11, the sneak peek of Windows 11. Looks I familiar. Just, I just couldn't help but notice the dock at the bottom. Hmm. Does that look anything like <laughs> Mac OS? A little yeah, bit. Yeah, it sure does. Anyway, Windows 11 is on the horizon. This is a leaked uh, feed showing some shots of Windows from uh, some website in, you guessed it, China. Uh, and, um, so here's an early look. So I, I'm, you know, I'm curious, uh, windows 10 X was supposed to be coming. Um, and windows 10 X is gone. That Then either they just kiboshed the name or they scrapped it entirely. I don't know, but, uh, windows 11 is on the horizon and it should be, well, we'll see. I mean, I'm very curious. The most, the most thing, thing I'm curious about is really is how backward compatible it is. Because with Microsoft Windows, it's always been about supporting legacy software. You know, I can still run Adobe Audition 1.5 or Cool Edit Pro on a Windows 10 computer, right? And that's pretty unique um, to, to a Windows type system. So will Windows 11 have that same kind of, you know, links to the past? Um, will it be a whole new pro uh, platform? Are they going to shoo backward compatibility to be able to finally forge ahead with, you know, new technologies. Who knows? But anyway, it's on the horizon. So I want to make cool. sure everybody get a cool look at that. That was on theverge.com if you want to go find that for yourself. So um, I got to work in Scott Rummel's place again. Um, I've worked with Scott Rummel in his home studios a couple of times over the years. He's moved once or twice, not really so much, but just moved in his own home. Like, let's put the studio in this part of the house or that kind of thing. Well, it's time. it was time to downsize, and, and his whole world is now uh, in one 
home. There's no longer a second home. And so we were able to really take the best of everything he had and put it in one space. And including uh, included in that was uh, the all-important acoustical ceiling cloud. And, uh, well, because we could, we did it what I consider the right way, which is having it entirely assembled and built custom into the ceiling. So when you look up at the ceiling, all you see is essentially lights and a vent for the HVAC and that's really? it. It doesn't look like uh, there's much going on up there because the whole ceiling is the cloud. You know, you frame it out, you fill it with insulation, you put in your wiring for your electrical, your lights and everything. And then when that's all done, then you wrap that whole thing in fabric and it makes for a cool look. But I did get some video, a very short little montage of me assembling it. So, um, Sue, do you roll that or do I roll that? I haven't played a video in here yet. See what, let's see what happens. Here we All go. Right, roll it. Boy, you move fast. George, you have done it again. You were invited to stay over the night, but you're driving home. I have a girlfriend, man. I gotta go home. I you can't. Were, you've been here for basically two days because it's after midnight. Thank you so much for this beautiful studio and your great work again. I don't know how many times you build studios for me, but it's a lot now. <laughs> this is the last one for a while. Right? Thank you. <laughs> this is my forever studio. Congratulations. Thank it you. It came buddy. out really nice, and it sounds amazing. Thank you so much. At the end there, uh, at the end there, you could see the ceiling cloud a little bit. I forgot yeah. to mention that you didn't really get to see, but um, yeah, it was. It's always a long day because. Scott's got like a lot of ideas what he wants to do with his space. It's kind of like you, Dan. You want to be able to do a lot of things with your setup, including he wants to be able to, you know, digitize vinyl records and digitize archives of old cassettes that his father recorded. And so when he's between jobs, he's able to do that. It's all right there in the rack. And uh, uh, he's, we, I found him a Nakamichi cassette deck on eBay. Mm. Um, <laughs> they're not that easy to find, you know, in really good shape that work great. So... Um, yeah, so it's kind of a neat. It's a it's a mishmash of new and old. You might have spotted the Apollo in the rack at the very very bottom if you have a yeah. sharp eye. What I did notice was the Yamaha H5 monitors, which I grace my studio as well. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, they're they're fantastic. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. So we hooked up all the gear. I hooked up everything. The first thing that really got plugged in early on was the monitors, and they started buzzing. And I was like, well, they're buzzing because not everything's plugged in or I don't have the mixer turned on, et cetera. I'm listening to them buzz and buzz and buzz and buzz. And I'm like, I'm not going to troubleshoot it until really everything's connected because I want to. I don't want to troubleshoot one thing, have the buzz go away, and then have it come back. So that's kind of my theory. I wait until it's done, then start reversing it. Anyway, long story short, when I got it all up and running, they buzzed like crazy. Um, when we turned on his, um, he has a, a V13 microphone made by uh vanguard, vanguard that's a tube yep. mic when i pot that mic up buzz like crazy uh when his studio ear is in your monitors buzzing it was a buzzing nightmare and i did everything right balanced cables you know everything's plugged into one single grounded outlet in the wall shouldn't buzz right well it it did and it's about eight o'clock on a on you know it's 8 p.m and i'm about to lose my mind i want to get this thing done and go home long story short i ran over to best buy and i picked up a panamax mr4000 what the heck is that a power conditioner um, we've known them made by Furman, monster power but panamax is a big brand now it's being sold at the big box stores like best buy um and thankfully all the buzz all the line noise went away mm. when i swapped that into the rack so we took out the existing switcher which was a Furman, but did not have any kind of line noise conditioning and we replaced it with this unit which did have power filtering line noise conditioning 
and that made all the difference. So these aren't instant fixes for every noise issue. Make sure you've done your due diligence. Make sure you're using balanced connections. Make sure things are grounded. And in some cases, you might need to unground certain things. There's there's certain things you should do. But when you've torn your, torn your hair out, a box like this could save your, save your butt. I wish I bought it a few hours earlier, but still, I've kind of looked at these things as a little bit of a snake oily kind of thing. Um, and cause I've installed them in a lot of cases where they didn't fix the problem, but here it did. Great. Um, anyway, last thing, um, I want to mention real quick was, uh, check out this thing called the Tula USB mic. It is, um, arguably, I mean, we keep talking about unique, uh, USB microphones, even though we keep saying, you yeah, know, they're maybe not the best microphones to use for VO, but there's still innovation happening in this space. And this one is one of the is one of those cases where this company um, that makes really really high end microphones decided let's make something accessible to a larger audience and make it more versatile. And so they came out with the Tula. Here's a quick look at it before we go to Byron because I want to get Byron on here in a second. Here's the Tula. What makes it interesting um, is that this sucker has. Well, first of all, the price is pretty remarkable, but what it can do for that price point is some of the specs are really impressive. It has Burr Brown op amp chips, which this is a technical buzz thing, but they're considered one of the better quality preamp and AD converter circuits that you can get in hmm. a you know compact piece of gear. They're much better than what you might get in like a say a focus stripe. Um, yeah. It has um, a backup built-in recorder, so. It has up to, I think, eight gigs of memory. It'll store 14 hours of WAV files. So I like, I like the idea of that. Because So if you're working on things that are long form and you want to have a backup of what you're doing, the mic is doing that. It's built hmm. in. And while it's also running as a USB mic, I had to, I had to ask them that. I didn't, I didn't know for sure if the USB would function while recording. But yes, indeed, they work together. It also has some quirky stuff like it has a lav mic input. So you can plug a lav mic in and now it becomes a lav mic setup. So you can just stick it in your pocket and wear a lav mic for doing a quick video. So it has multifunction that way. It also has omni and cardioid mics. Not wow. sure how often omni would come up, but it's you in never there. Know. The last yeah. magic thing it does, which is very controversial, is it has noise reduction built in. Um, and it's using one that we've talked about or I've talked about before called the Clev Grand Bruce free noise reduction plugin. It's built into the mic and I've used this plugin and it is very impressive how well it works. Should you have noise reduction in a voiceover microphone? Arguably that's a very niche case how how often that would come up. But you know if it works well and it's pretty seamless, it could be the difference between pulling off a job and not pulling off a job. So anyway, very curious to get one in my hot little hands to try out in the real world and see if it really holds up, you know. Me too. To, me too. To, me too. Yeah. I want to check it out. Me too. Me too. You guys listening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and a two twenty nine that fits into my parameters of don't buy a USB microphone one off of Facebook and two, uh, you know, more than you know one hundred and fifty two hundred dollars. And this thing apparently has all that tech built into it. Yeah. Well, right now we have a special guest on Tech Talk. Uh, <laughs> voiceover super genius Byron Wagner is with us. Byron, welcome back to the show. And you know, make sure your laundry's dry there. He's on mute. We have to unmute him. Unmute him. Unmute Byron. Boom. Come on. Unmute Mike. I think that's your job, Sue. Can you do it, Sue, or does Byron have to do it? Yeah, go into your settings and Ta -da. there he is. He's back. Uh, Mr. Super Genius uh, figures it out. <laughs> you didn't tell me I was going to have to do that complicated stuff to be on your show. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> anyway, you have a new high-tech thingy uh, called Abiton that is going to be a benefit to all of voiceover mankind. Tell us about it. I'll be happy to. And actually, it's kind of your fault uh, because you. <laughs> the last time I was on, I was wearing these exact same clothes just for continuity so we can cut between them. You if have, you want. apparently, you have washed them though, and they've been hanging I out. I have. Right. I have. I have. Well, 
whether I needed to or not. Let's put it that way. You use the Steve Jobs, yeah. you know, wardrobe thing. You never want to yes, have to decide that, what to wear. You just wear that's the same exactly thing. right. I have a hundred shirts exactly like this in my closet. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, a year or so ago, pre-pandemic, if we can remember back that far, yeah. I was on your show because you were smart enough or silly enough to ask me, and I dropped hints about a project that we were working on. And I even made the offer that if people were, you know, brave enough, we would, um, after the initiation ritual and, you know, emptying their wallets, uh, make them beta testers for the thing that we were doing. And a number of people uh, actually signed up and have been helping us with that for a while. And now I get to tell everybody what it is because I promised you after that show last year, was it last year? It was last year. 2019 probably yes i meant what i said and i said what i meant and elephants faithful 100 percent uh and this is actually sue's q almost this is actually as i promised dan and george the unveiling the kimono opening of a project called abaton the abaton calendar at abaton.com Roll them, Sue. Wrong item. <laughs> We're looking for the video as opposed to the screen share. But if you've lost the file, I can help you out. Here we go. Here it comes. Here it comes. Conferences, classes, workouts, webinars, coaching, podcasts, blogs, meetups, awards. There's tons of cool stuff going on in the world of voiceover. So, how do you find out about them? Well, there's social media, newsletters, email, personal websites, word of mouth, you name it. And therein lies the double-edged sword. They're randomly scattered everywhere. Kind of a pain to keep track of, huh? But what if you could find them all in one place? What if there was a calendar for the whole world of voiceover? Welcome to the Abaton Calendar a global calendar for voiceover events. On the Abaton calendar, you can see what's going on in the voiceover industry, in any place, at any time, on either your computer, phone, or tablet. Here, you can discover all kinds of fun events, masterclasses, meetups, mixers, and more, both in person and online. Giving us all the chance to learn, share, and make the most of every experience. Everyone in the voiceover community can contribute new events and opportunities, whether local, national, or global. You can instantly export any event to your favorite personal calendar app. And you can share events that interest you via social media, instant messaging, and email. Let's take a look around. The first thing that you'll notice when you arrive at the landing page is a big, colorful, rotating carousel of events in the near future underneath a number of drop-down navigational menu choices. Below the carousel strip is the search bar, which can do simple or complex searches to find events you care about. Underneath that, you'll find several upcoming events displayed chronologically from left to right. Clicking on the titles for any of these events will take you to a dedicated page with more information about the event, the venue, and the organizers. If we continue down the left-hand column of the page, you'll see previews of selected blog posts and podcast episodes. To the right of those, you'll see information about a featured event. And, as with all of our events, you can share this information with others on social media and add it to your personal calendar app on your mobile device or desktop computer with just a click. Moving further down the left side, is a mini-carousel of the most current articles from Audiobook Business News. To the right are logos linked to our sponsors' websites. Further down the page are mini-views featuring information about the calendar, upcoming events, past events, and recent posts. The very bottom of the page provides links to check out our social media posts and shortcuts to our terms of use, privacy, and cookie policies and our frequently asked questions. At the very top of the screen, you'll find shortcuts that will let you navigate the site, choose how to view events or submit a new one, check out blog posts and podcasts, 
get help, watch video tutorials, and keep tabs on the events, organizers, and venues that you have favorited and subscribed to. Wow. You like that? Y yes. Oh, good. I mean, We're always looking for what, what's coming up, what conference is coming up, what webinars are coming up, when is Voice Over Body Shop on, when it always is. You know, uh, you know, and you know how much this all costs, Dan? How much? Glad you asked. <laughs> I have no clue. Zero zip boob kiss, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. For the moment, all of the functionality, including the value add stuff that wasn't mentioned in the preview, which is, would you like to share the events on your own personal calendar, whether it's, you know, Apple or Google calendar or whatever. Would you like to share events with others? Would you like to post new events? Would you like to follow as in favorite particular organizers venue so that anytime somebody like George or Dan has an event, you get notified. And if there are any changes in the event, you get notified. So there's a lot of stuff like that. Um, we have a plan for a business model that involves additional value add for both the people that are putting on events and the people that are attending. But for the moment, it's all free. Um, we are modulating. We have our hands on kind of the big wheel for demand and supply because the supply is all there already. Um, we have, when you go to abaton.com, you get three choices at the top. It says, would you like the nickel tour? You see the video that you just saw. If you'd like to sign up for the waiting list, you sign up for the wait list. And once you get twanged on the head by the magic fairy with the kosher magic wand, then you get promoted to being able to register on the site and so on. And right now that means actually seeing the site because that's the only way you can do it right now. So we keep the demand down to a dull roar and we can, you know, make the smoke go back into the box when people push it out. What do you not put on the site? So like, uh, is there anything that would not be appropriate to be auditions? On Avid? <laughs> auditions. The concept of the site is very simple. It got started because I got pissed off and I'm a selfish person. Basically, uh, in 2019, I had been looking forward to going to, uh, attending a, a very unique retreat. It's Johnny Heller's new England narrators retreat. It's once a year. It's limited to a small number of people. You got to sign up right away to get on. I had not been able to attend the first couple of years that he did it. And I got in great. About three days later, I'm in Vegas at a show we used to call NAB. Hopefully it will be happening again with human beings. And I ran into Dave Courvoisier, who was the head at the time of, or might've been the head at the time of Wovo. Okay. Wovo is a great organization. He was in the, um, the IPDTL booth and he said, Hey, we just decided on the dates for the annual Wovo conference. And it's October 15th here in Vegas. It was like, no. That's the weekend that I'm going to be in Rhode Island at the Johnny Heller thing. And Dave very realistically said, well, you know, you can't coordinate everything and you're always, and it was like, no, no, people should have a place to be able to coordinate these things or at least make knowledgeable decisions. Yeah. So that was interesting and annoying and whatever. And then about, I don't know, a week or two later, I saw an ad or announcement of a brand new conference called vocation voiceover vocation voiceover business that was going to be in new york and the people who were putting it together were the people who put together vonyc a killer group and i thought well who knows it's going to be the first year they've never done a thing like this before i've got relatives that i can stay with in manhattan i always like going to new york i'll go do that so i sign up for that and then i find out that by being there that weekend i'm gonna miss the once a year at that point in time social that's put on by the audio publishing association for the audiobook narrators of which i is one so like, ah, crap and then i found out that the monday after that or the tuesday after that they were doing the east coast social so i'd be there for that and then i found out that johnny heller was doing a <laughs> workshop on that tuesday and then i found out that the following weekend in toronto there was this thing that i'd never heard of before called vo north i was like wait the airfare from Toronto to LA and New York and LA are the same. I can get a $60 shuttle flight from New York to Toronto. I could go to that too. 
So all I was amazed of these when things, I saw you show up there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I so I thought this is nuts because I'm going to run into somebody at the Johnny Heller thing in New York and tell them how I'm looking to go, go looking forward to going to Toronto for VO North and they'll go, "What's that?" So that was like, "Okay, okay, this is enough. Somebody should do it." In hindsight, like anything else that I've done that's ever been even slightly successful, it's just obvious. And so I started putting a little bit of a crew together doing the back end stuff, deciding on what we want to do on the front end. And like Topsy, it grew originally, we were not going to do, um, podcasts and, and, uh, um, and blogs, but that just became obvious because they weren't listed anywhere else. So like the promotional piece says now, instead of having to be on a bazillion email lists and check a bazillion and a half Facebook groups that you have to belong to, and you have to know that they exist. We even have, you know, today you're doing this it's on our calendar we have the listing for the clubhouse part of this as well as the vobs video part of this and uh so that's what we're doing and um you know like i said i'm just i'm just a lazy greedy person and it seemed like an obvious thing to do there you go amazing well we don't have to get into the technology of how it all works and everything but it certainly is something that is needed (laughs) <laughs> badly needed because you know i mean it's hard enough to keep up with the jewish holidays but you're looking at all the stuff that's going on in the voiceover business is is pretty tough uh and um well just to go- jump in there for a second yeah uh yo no hablo espanol but we have spanish we have spanish events going on cool. anything you know unicode covers the great majority of languages But the curation process demands that somebody understand what the hell the thing is and is it of genuine value to the voiceover community. So we're trying to curate it to say it's great that somebody's doing a self-help program about, uh, you know, think of any one of those things that could be of value to a voiceover person. But is there a voiceover angle? Is it being given specifically for VO people? Is it being given by someone who is a voiceover artist or whatever? So we're trying to kind of I won't say weed out. I'll simply say, make sure that we have as much value for the voiceover community as possible. So each of the events has a category, which is kind of like a noun in the equation and tags. So is it a party? Is it a webcast? Is it a class? And whatever of those it is, is it for somebody interested in animation or, you know, uh, uh, ADR as in looping, is it, you know, so you get to, you get to search on all kinds of things and the Venn diagram subset intersection of all those things too. Great. So to get access to this, they go to abaton.com, A B A T O N dot C O M. Amazing. The magic of technology. And when you go there, you'll have a bunch of choices, uh, do the nickel tour. So you can see the video again and see if we made any mistakes. And then sign up for the wait list. The wait list is currently about two or three days as more people now know about it because of your damn show. Lots more. Yeah, exactly. But that's good. So that way we will, again, control supply, demand, big wheels, levers, and meters and stuff. That's the theory. Find out. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll have you report back once you've, you know, you got all the bugs out of it. Although I'm sure you pretty much have the bugs out of it, but, uh, yeah, we'll check it out and see uh, how it works as uh, we go on into uh, summer and fall and uh, see if it works out for us. So we really appreciate you putting that together and taking your time and helping out, really giving back to the voiceover community with something like that. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All righty. All right. We'll be back answering your tech questions here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 59 right after these messages. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, it looks like traveling is coming back into vogue, and Harlan Hogan's Portabooth Pro and Plus make recording on the road a breeze. And in that spirit, here are some of Harlan's top tips for recording professional quality audio away from home in 2021. Number one, the motel ironing board. Practically every hotel and motel provides an ironing board in your room. But forget ironing. It's a perfect height-adjustable stand for your Portabooth Pro or Portabooth Plus. 2. If you can, turn off the heat and the air conditioning. 3. Switch off the fridge or minibar. 
4. Request a room that's inherently quiet away from the vending machines. Harlan's been known to actually unplug them. After about 9 a.m., most hotel fitness centers are deserted. Here's a bonus tip. Use voice-optimized headphones and stay away from windows. Harlan has a whole bunch more tips for you VO Road Warriors. So check out voiceoveressentials.com before you check in and get your travel-friendly Portabooth Pro or Plus. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Hey, have you guys heard of Source Connect? You haven't? Go over to sourceelements.com and check out what Source Connect can do in your studio, connecting you to all the best studios in the world. Head over to sourceelements.com and tell them we sent you. Let's go answer some questions, shall we? Let's go. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. All righty. We are back here at Voice Over Body Shop. Thanks to Byron Wagner for uh, telling us about that. That's really cool. I mean, it's I'm, something we've always wanted. <laughs> absolutely. I want my events on there. That's for sure. Mine too. And of course, <laughs> Voice Over Body Shop will be there every week. Of course. So we got lots of questions. Thank goodness. We love hearing from you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, first, we had one that was emailed back or emailed to us. You can do that. You can send us an email anytime you want at uh, the guys at voice over at at guys at V-O-B-S dot TV. Mm -hmm. Don't do the show for a week or two. You forget all these things. (laughs) The guys. Anyway. Yeah. Question from Don Sheldon. He says, with many of us back to traveling this summer, what's the best version of travel gear with a home setup that includes a 416 mic and an Apollo twin that includes George's nifty custom settings? Would an Apollo solo do the trick on the road, or is the processing power and latency too noticeable between the two for basic VO needs? And he goes into all this stuff like, you know, do you, what about the Yell Spear L22 and Universal Audio and that's an awful lot of stuff to throw into your suitcase. Uh, we you know like you to need s- Dan, you need a <laughs> yeah. shotgun mic and one of these and one of those really, <laughs> you don't need a Apollo <laughs> twin. I mean, are you doing live streaming or are you doing like promo and trailer stuff? I mean, if you're doing voiceover work that you process in the box, AKA plugin, plugin chains or effects racks and Adobe or twisted wave stacks or, Better yet, if you don't do any processing, you don't need all that crap. All you need is a good shotgun mic and an interface like the MicPort Pro 2 um, or even an old MicPort Pro if you still find one laying around. Yeah. Um, you just need basic stuff. You don't, it's, it's, you're going way over the top tech wise. And I mean, taking a Townsend Labs with you, I, I would do that only if you're like on a bunch of network shows or cartoons. And they expect you to have the exact same mic with you everywhere you go. And you want to be able to have maybe a 416 and a U87. Well, that mic costs a third of the price of both and sounds can do either mic. So still, it's a big, bulky mic, very expensive piece of equipment to haul around with you. Honestly, don't don't go there. I mean, yeah. if, if you're not going to listen to me, the Apollo Solo is perfectly fine. You don't need the twin, but trust me, th- something like this is all you need. Yeah. Oh, and we were you were just talking about the uh, uh, the USB mic uh, just a little while ago. The uh, what was that called? The uh, the the Burr Brown. Uh, the uh, with all the different names that sound like it's Swedish. Um, oh, the Tula. The Tula, right? The Tula. Yeah. I mean, I don't. There are cases you could get away with USB mics, and yes, there are some pretty badass USB mics out there too that are 
becoming reality. Um, they're very bleeding edge tech, but um, one of them we talked about before was made by um, Antelope Audio. Right. And uh, there are some really amazing things coming that will be able to condense the entire studio into your mic. Um, but I'm still going to say use the mic that you use at home to make money. If, and, and, and the 416 is the most logical choice. And if you're on a more of a budget, the Rode NTG5, like I'm using right now, is a really good cost-effective alternative. All righty. Uh, once again, if you got a question, do we have any questions in Clubhouse right now? Uh, none yet, but I'll shove them. I'll shove a little notification in our rundown when there is one pending. All right. We got a question here from Don Dean. I'll condense this one. He says, I currently use a Scarlett 2i2 and solo interfaces, hopefully not at the same time, uh, usually with direct monitoring into headphones. So you can hear yourself or pre-roll and punch in, I guess, if he's doing audiobooks. All right. He says, my hearing's declining largely from, you know, congenital factors. It all happens to us. Uh, to the point where I need hearing aids in many situations, and I'm wondering how hearing will work with voiceover. So he's asking essentially about certain types of hearing aids or certain types of headphones that will work with hearing aids. Do we know anything about that? Not a whole lot. Um, and amazingly, it seems like the audiology world doesn't know a whole lot about pro audio use cases. Of course. Um, I did a little Googling because I saw this question and I found a website called Bernafon, B-E-B-E-R-N, -E -E Bern, A-F-O-N. It's probably Bernafon.com. Uh, and they seem to be a company that's trying to bridge the gap. They make what they call a hybrid um, a hearing aid that has a pro audio connectivity. That's the key. If you, need, if you have hearing aids, you want to be able to plug into them hardwired to be able to monitor what you want to monitor at the same time. And that's probably the way to go. But I, I have another su suggestion for him here. In the theme of keeping things simple, here's the deal. You don't need headphones to do punch and roll. Depending on what software you're using, you don't need to monitor. Actually, Pro Tools, Reaper, Twisted Wave, all of these, I know for a fact, allow you to do punch and roll with no headphones. You just have a speaker set up to cue you the pre-roll. You don't have to have headphones. You don't have to monitor yourself while recording, okay? Keep it simple. It, you just need to hear the, the, the roll in, the three to five second pre-roll, and that's it. So don't worry so much about it. Yes, you can wear headphones over your hearing aids. I mean, you're going to have to try all these things out for yourself and see what works. I don't know how big your hearing aids are. I don't know how much room on your ear they take up. I'd say of all the headphones out there that could possibly be usable over headphones probably would be these, the, the, NT, the, the DT770s, because they have such huge ear cups. Dan, you used to have a pair, too, that were like for drummers that had huge ear cups. Yes, um, the, uh, the, what, these direct are the sound? direct sound. Very good, direct sound. Yeah, and I use these. They're, they're very flat, uh, which is, you know, and they really are designed for drummers because, you know, the, so drummers need to really be isolated or have good isolated hearing right. uh, so they can, you know, hear exactly how they're beating and exactly what's what they're, they're recording over and stuff. But, yeah, these are, these are really nice. These are called uh, Sound Design Extreme Isolation EX-29s. Yeah. So whatever it is, you're going to have to buy them and try them. You're not going to yeah. know if they're going to work with your type of hearing loss, your type of hearing aids, um, until you try them. I will tell you that Bluetooth is a non-starter. You can't use it for real-time uh, monitoring because of the latency. So if you wanted to use Bluetooth, you could use it to monitor the pre-roll or the lead-in, but that little delay that Bluetooth causes it would be enough to throw you off from the timing of where you're punching in. So the Bluetooth thing, while baked into ear hearing aids, is really nifty. That isn't going to work either. You might just, you could just, at the very least, go with a good pair of in-ear monitors. All the companies make them now: Audio Technica, Shure, Sennheiser. Just get a good pair, and just the fact that they're deep in your ear canal, you may not hear what you want to hear in an accurate way, but you'll still hear enough of the audio to get a cue. It seems like that's your main need right now. Yeah. All righty. Uh, hopefully we'll get somebody on Clubhouse who wants to ask us a question because we yeah, love hearing also, the, Yeah. If you're watching the playback on this and you have light to share on this subject, please leave a comment yeah. down below. Leave it in the Facebook or the YouTube. 
leave comments on this stuff and help out the other viewers like this that have these unusual questions. Yeah. Um, that way we can all help each other out. Excellent. Uh, question from Jeff. From our very own Jeff Holman. Hey, Jeff. Um, I've extolled the values of four inch RLX foam Virtue. over two inch. Virtues. Yeah. Did I say values? You I did, did say values. I, it those, happens. Those two. <laughs> uh, but that's not what he wrote. Um, you have extolled the virtues of four inch RLX foam over two inch foam and of flat faced foam panels over wedge shaped front facing panels. Man, Jeff listens. Um, given the RLX Good. flat faced foam panels come in a, a maximum of two inches, that's right. Um, and the wedge shaped, shaped panels come in at a maximum of four inches uh, thickness, which would be more effective. Um, if the four inch wedge shaped foam is about one third more expensive than the two inch flat based foam, which is more cost effective. I don't know because I haven't <laughs> compared those two head to head yet to see. Um, I would just look at the NRC values. I would look at the little charts that are included with RLX explaining the performance of each of those two and see which one works better for your particular situation. Um, I have heard the four inch RLX used in booths and it's very effective. Um, considering its cost, and the fact that it wears out and falls apart in about 10 years, I would be much more, I would definitely consider going fabric raft panels over the four inch thick foam, which you could get custom made for your space with the fabric you like and save money over the four inch thick, uh, four inch uh, Oralex foam wedge stuff. So yeah. I, I would definitely not go foam, but between the two, in most cases, I think the flat face foam is still the way to go. Um, I just don't have the numbers in front of me to, to do a comparison, uh, right off the top of my head. Yep. Well, and one of the, and it's general and it's different from every room and you don't necessarily know how it's going to sound in any one particular place until you put it up. Absolutely. So, it's true. You know, so it's uh, kind of, a, sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Our next question is from Grace Newton. Uh, what's an effective way to quietly light one's booth, both for recording and Zoom calls? Well, you know, hmm. you can get a ring light. Those are, you know, those are really good, especially for Zoom calls. They, you know, surround your, your, uh, your camera and, uh, you know, I, all the professional uh, influencers use those. I don't know I mean, of any LED modern, any kind of new LED lighting that would make any make noise. noise. Yeah. I mean, unless you're like, you know, turning the generator yourself, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those, I have one of those in a drawer somewhere. No, LED lights don't make any noise. I mean, some, you know, some of the overhead ones that might have a, a ballast on them or a transformer, those can buzz. I've seen, I've seen that happen, but for a, just regular strip lights or a, 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 you know, a book light that's battery powered, it doesn't make any noise. No, none of, none, pretty much none of them do that. That would, that would be bad or old or defective technology. So yeah, don't so worry just, about it too much. Yeah. Next one. You get this one. All right. William Scott asks, what would you guys suggest for a digital interface for a school tech box, a school tech box. So I, I don't know exactly the description, but sounds like something that's going to be used in school. Like in a class. Yeah. So I, is this the thing that hangs on the wall in front of the classroom that the teacher stands next to? I don't, I guess that's what, uh, be a little more detailed asking with about. That. if you pop it into the comments, what you're a little follow-up of what you're referring to, you know, we kind of work with voiceover mostly. That's why some of these things we're just like, huh? It's a jargon thing. And I'm just not aware of the jargon. So let's know what you're talking about. Maybe I can give you a better. Um, give you some kind of accurate information rather than just throwing model numbers at you. Right. Yeah. But if you're just looking for a simple interface, you know, a focus right solo, uh, no problem you know, there. Not expensive, 110 bucks or so. Yeah. You know, we, we've, you know, we've done shootouts with, with interfaces and they all sound good. Just don't buy one under a hundred bucks. Yeah. There's very little out there under that price point where the quality is maintained. I've found. Yeah. Um, Mary Beth Scriven, this is from the YouTube chat. Mm. Uh, I'm calling Vocal Booth. Can I assume you mean vocalbooth.com or Vocal Booth to, to go? go? Oh, it says 
the I am calling do. Vocal Booth to go tomorrow. Okay, it says it on the. <laughs> again, read what read the words that are on the <laughs> screen. Right. Yeah. I am calling Vocal Booth to go tomorrow and looking into purchasing one of their booths. I feel that would work best for me. Thoughts. Well, well, it how do you know? <laughs> like when depends on which I booth. I feel it's going to be a good solution. How, I, how could we possibly know that? So yeah. we have to know a lot about your situation. The space you're putting it, the noise floor of the room, how much random noise you're trying to eliminate. Um, there's a lot of things to consider there. Before I stop my motor mouth going, of course I'm going to plug my own product that I co-developed with Rick Wasserman called TriBooth, T R I booth.com just take a look at that first see if it looks interesting to you but again none of these things are soundproof um even Very the soundproofing now. one that they sell this is three thousand plus dollars it ain't soundproof like it stops a good some of sound coming in but if your dog or animal is in the room with you you're gonna hear that if your kids down the hall screaming you're gonna hear that so don't overspend on something that claims any degree of soundproofing. Um, almost none of them actually do that unless you're spending five to 6,000 plus for a true isolation booth. Yeah. What, what I have found is you can, you know, if you use it like a PVC booth with, uh, you know, with blankets, whether moving blankets or the vocal booth to go blankets, the producer's choice, which are excellent for really yeah. cutting down reflection. If you put it in a really quiet room, that's the grace combination uh, sure. because, you know, you know, even if you're in a large room, it's going to cut that down. But if it, that you're able to close the door behind you and go into a smaller booth, you know, that will work, but you can't put it in the middle of your living room uh, and expect that to keep everything nice and quiet. There is a big difference between soundproofing and sound treatment and the blankets are sound treatment not soundproofing a lot of a lot of this stuff is is transparent to uh, audio like tissue paper so it'll go right through it but it won't let anything reflect back which is fascinating but anyway right, exactly next question on the docket uh from douglas voice guy it says i was tuning in late okay D did you talk about any great prime day deals pertaining to voiceover well, you know, for those of you watching live, uh, you don't have a whole lot of time. The wife was asking me, well, it's prime day. What does everybody need? Do you, does everybody need underwear? You know, so suddenly all the, all, everybody in the house is getting new underwear. Uh, but, you know, is there anything that's what really determines what is going to be good for prime? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think the prime days are just as much of a joke as like a lot of the other big sales. I, I don't know. Amazon plays with their prices like like the stock market. Right. You know, their prices fluctuate up and down. They're all over the damn map. Yeah, you could spend hours on there scouring their their thing and maybe find something relevant to you, but I I frankly I just don't I don't I don't get into it. I, I never I never once have I gotten excited about Prime Day and and focused on their what they're selling. I just not my thing. Not my thing. Sorry to be a downer on the last question of the show. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, just, you know. I just don't care about Prime Day that much, frankly, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Well, at least I'm getting new underwear out of it. So that, that's, really, <laughs> that's really what's important. You know, and, you know, it's usually, usually when Prime Day comes up, it's like, well, we can get another Echo Dot. <laughs> so right. they can listen to us in every room. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best deals on there consistently are their own products at the end of the day. So if you know you want to buy more Amazon branded stuff then you're probably going to find some screaming deals you know yeah, but uh yeah. I, I, yeah. I have found the echo dot to be good for two things one listening to several different streaming stations when you feel like it and two at you know midnight or so alexa turn the light out or alexa let there be light yeah. It's it's better than the clapper and a lot classier. I, I ask mine two things. <laughs> well, I ask it to give me reminders. Yeah. And I ask me ask it what's the weather. That that's literally oh, yeah, the all weather. I, that's all I ever do with my my Echo Dot. And now that I found out that they uh, they talk to each other and create a wireless mesh network network with the neighbors, they call it sidewalk. That's another layer of interesting automatically opt-in possibly bad privacy stuff. 
going on there. So yeah. Or or the thing that happened with in she where she suddenly goes off and oh. starts relating to other <laughs> Alexis and right. off she goes. Right. But I was mm-hmm. in love with her. Uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the uh yeah the I, I, I find the Alexa useful, but again, something can be kind of kind of intrusive. Anyway, um so we last week we did webinars you got the guest host or or guest on one of my webinars about processing and of course that was lots of fun we'll find out uh and uh (laughs) you know we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about doing more you know paid webinars so we can get into real deep detail uh into how you set up a home voiceover studio and again if you want to work with one of us you can work with george over at george the dot tech and if you want to work with me, you can go head on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, we'll talk about what you need to know. I mean, it's amazing to me how much misinformation is out there. And if you go into all the Facebook forums and ask a question, you will get 10,000 different answers. And the fact of the matter is that everybody's an expert in usually one studio, their own. George and I have been doing this for a long time. Look, we've been doing this show for 10 years and we didn't start that until we actually knew what we were doing with all the home studios. Cause it was technology that didn't really exist 15, 20 years ago. So we've sort of grown with, with what it is. And, uh, so we generally know the answers to your specific problems or have the information that you need to get things going. That's the key word specific 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 so when you ask questions on the show be specific some of the questions tonight were extremely specific and other ones were extremely general without any usable information to give us a you know give you an accurate answer so please always give us lots of details that will really help us give you a good answer that's right all righty well we're gonna wrap things up and so i can go rowing off to uh, iceland right after these messages this is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. And we are back to say goodbye, but we've got a few people to thank first, but remember, we're not going to be around most of July. I think we'll be back for our next live show on July 25th. And, uh, so 
But there are so many more episodes that perhaps if you started watching us, you know, halfway through the pandemic or sometime in 2021, and you want to go back and look at the first six months of this year, look at all the shows we've had. We've had some amazing guests. And uh, so make sure that uh, you check those out so you won't be, you know, on voiceover body shopped for a month. Anyway, so we got a lot of people to thank tonight. Uh, for example, we have to thank our sponsors like, you know, Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Dan, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can. Does it sound good? Okay, good. Cause I can't hear you at all. I just power cycle. I didn't power cycle, but I unplugged the USB on the roadcaster and plugged it back in trying to clear up the static that you guys apparently were hearing for a lot of the show. So Sorry, I don't know why I can't hear Dan. So I'm going to read the credits and then wrap this up. <laughs> I, always a party. I'm here. Always a party. <laughs> um, so let me thank the sponsors and our donors, and then we can wrap this up. Um, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, Sandra Manwiller, uh, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Thomas Pinto. Hey, it's on the bottom of the screen, too. Look at that. <laughs> Makes it easy. Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino, and Natasha Merchevka. Thank you, everybody who's made donations to the show. I really, we really, really, really appreciate it. Dan, take it away. All righty. Well, we got to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC Demos. Our thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room, Danny Burnside on Clubhouse, uh, Sumerlino doing it with helicopters circling her house, and Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week, and uh, looking forward to some vacation time here with the with the misses and the North Atlantic during the hottest part of the year in Southern California. Uh, anyway, is this um, when I hit the button? B S. No, not yet. No, no. You take <laughs> take two on that. I I will point to you when it's time to do that. Anyway, I'm George I, Whitem. Yeah, I'm Dan Leonard. B S. <laughs> Whatever. Tech talk. Tech talk. <laughs> tech talk. <laughs> talk tech, tech talk. talk. Hey, we'll see you. I think it's time for some time off. Take care, guys. We'll see you soon. <laughs>